Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. You know what's even better? You know what I'm thinking about? Spread the word to your friends about the best, best wine show anywhere. That's what's even better. Anyway, welcome to Freestyle Friday where I get to do what I want. It's my last episode of the session, Mead. What does that conjure up in your head? Vikings sitting at long tables in a large room with food and large steins that delicious golden beverage dripping down their beards. Yeah, me too. Anyway, what does meat anyway? Kind of like my question about sake. Is it beer? Is it a wine? It's for sure a fermented product. Like sake, it's technically neither because of its main ingredient, honey. Today, we'll go more in depth on this liquid gold. The main ingredient, like I mentioned, is honey. It is combined with water and sometimes various fruits, spices, grains, and even hops. Because of this, meat is closer to beer because of the addition of water and sometimes other ingredients. Where it differs from beer is that honey doesn't need to go through a sacrification process like malting in order to get to the sugar. Honey already is sugar, so this resembles wine making since the grapes already have sugar in them. You can make various kinds of mead from still to carbonated, naturally sparkling, dry, semi-sweet, or sweet. It can range anywhere from 3.5% ABV to more than 18%. You may remember my 2019 Halloween special featured Viking Blood Mead it has an ABV of 19%. I got a link below to that description. Or link below in the description to that episode, sorry. Slate. Uh, mead has been made for centuries in many parts of the world, not just the Nordic countries as we mostly associate it with. You can find it throughout Europe, Africa, and Asia. As far back as 7000 BC, there are pottery vessels discovered in northern China with the typical ingredients for mead, honey, rice, and the compounds associated with fermentation. It can be found in Bronze Age Europe, which is from about 2800 to 1800 BC. Written records of mead date back to the sacred books of the Vedic religion, which eventually became Hinduism, dating around 1700 to 1100 BC. In Greece, Aristotle said that mead was the preferred drink of the Golden Age of Greece. This was around 500 to 300 BC. Pliny, or Pliny as everyone says it, but I learned it Pliny in Latin class, not that that's correct or anything, but Pliny the Elder writes about both mead and wine sweetened with honey during the first century AD. Later in the 6th century AD, a poem attributed to the Welsh bard Taylorson is called the Song of Mead. In Beowulf, mead is prominent. You know what? I bet Beowulf could have used some cool t-shirts to sleep some monsters in. In my line of merchandise for WWTV, and what I call my outstanding line of merchandise would be perfect for that. Okay, maybe not. Anyway, my outstanding line is all about positivity, and it's based upon my response of outstanding when I'm asked how I'm doing. The outstanding line is all t-shirts for now. I have polos, t-shirts, and accessories for the WTV line. Check out this sweet logo t-shirt. Both lines are getting more variations in the future, so look for them on Zazzle. Link below in the description, so please check them out. All right, let's talk mead. When it comes to how it's made, it's very similar to wine. The type of flour can affect the final outcome of the mead, just like the type of grape. Since there's really no way to control the bees and what flowers they visit, their honey will always be a blend of the surrounding flowers. However, if there's a predominant flower near the hive, then you can safely assume that that will be the predominant flavor and aroma profile of the honey. I don't know exactly how many flowers are capable of providing the right nectar to make honey, but according to the National Honey Board's website, got a link below, there are over 300 different flowers just in the U.S. that honey is made from. Another cool resource, if you are thinking about getting into making mead, is the website Got Mead. I've linked to it in the description also. It helped with some of the additional info and was just plain interesting to check out. They even have a newbie guide to making mead. Very often, wine yeast will be used, especially yeast better suited for white wine. Even brewer's yeast can be used 
It also ferments in the same temperature range as wine, 45 degrees to 60 degrees Fahrenheit for white wines and 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit for red. And just like wine, the type of yeast will influence the aromas and flavors of the mead. From the beer side of fermentation, specific gravity measurements are taken. This is a density measurement that allows the calculation of the final ABV. In wine, a direct measurement of sugar is used. Once fermentation is slowed down significantly, the mead may get racked into a second vessel. This process is considered a second fermentation since the first one didn't finish. Racking is a common technique in wine, though it's normally done during the aging process where you're moving it from one barrel to another, or as soon as you're done with fermentation, full fermentation, you'll rack from, from say your fermentation vessel to another, to another uh, barrel or vessel. Racking is a way to clarify a liquid. The solids fall out of suspension naturally and you gently pour it from one barrel or vessel to another. Essentially, it's the same thing as decanting a wine from bottle to decanter to remove sediment. However, some producers won't do a racking, so the first and second fermentation happens in the same vessel. In this case, the sediment or solids will need to either naturally fall out of suspension, or they will use various techniques used in winemaking like cold stabilization or fining. The primary fermentation will take anywhere from 28 to 56 days, much longer than beer or wine except in rare circumstances. The second fermentation of the must, whether in a second vessel or the first vessel, takes place over a six to nine month aging period. These numbers can vary greatly. It all depends on the floral origin of the honey and its natural sugar and microorganism contents, must water percentage, pH, additives used, strain of yeast, among others. It also depends on what the mead maker's goal or style is. Mead can have a wide range of flavors depending on the source of the honey Additives are also known as adjuncts or groot, or groot uh, including fruit and spices, the yeast employed during the fermentation, and the aging procedure. A mead that is flavored with spices such as clove, cinnamon, or nutmeg, or ginger, or herbs such as meadowsweet, hops, or even lavender or chamomile is called a methaglin. A mead that contains fruit such as raspberry, blackberry, strawberry is called melomel, which is also used as a means of food preservation, keeping summer produce for the winter. A mead that is fermented with grape juice is called piment or piment. It's P-Y-M-E-N-T. Mold mead is a popular drink at Christmas time, where mead is flavored with spices and sometimes various fruits and warmed. Some meads retain some measure of the sweetness of the original honey, and some may even be considered as dessert wines. Drier meads are also available, and some producers offer sparkling meads. Mead can also be distilled to a brandy or liqueur strength. A version called Honey Jack can be made by partly freezing a quantity of mead and straining the ice out of the liquid, a process known as freeze distillation. It's in the same way that Apple Jack is made from cider. There are a ton of mead variants from around the world. I put the Wikipedia entry on mead in the description if you want to check all this out. As per usual, I've taken a lot of what I've already said from there. Lastly, shelf life and how long it will last after opening. So it depends on the style of the meat. A higher alcohol meat, something like 14% or higher, will last a good five plus years in a cool, dark place. Lighter meat is meant to be consumed within about six months. Once it's opened, a classic meat can stay out at room temperature, but putting it in a fridge will allow it to last several months. Lighter meats can go about a week. So how about we get in some mead? I have two right here. I'll get you the stats first and I'll give them a taste. First, I have Thorin's Viking Mead, and yes, the brewmaster's name is Thorin. Thorin Stavanoha, uh, to be exact. And the meadery is right here in Texas. Their address on the bottle places them in a small town named Page. They not only make mead, they also make cider. Their website also mentions wine, but I didn't see any listed. Just the mead and cider. I may have to pop in and visit sometime. Sounds like a good idea. Anyway, so the stats for this mead. The Thorns Viking Mead, 1799. This is a 750 milliliter bottle, so basically the same size as a wine bottle. This is just a straight regular mead, no additives. They call it a traditional Norse style. Not really sure what that means, but it sounds cool. What I got told is supposedly it's a 500 year old recipe. There's nothing on the site or the bottle that says it. It was the distributor told somebody that told me. 
Apparently the, the main flowers are sunflower and mustard flowers. So it's cool to at least know the flowers. Um, source from the hill country. Now just guessing since that's where the meadery is located. And technically the meadery is not in the actual Texas hill country. The county it's in is east of what's considered the actual hill country. But they may source the flowers from the hill country. And its ABV is only 12.9%. Not like the, you know, the Viking blood. Now, what about this mead here? Well, I'm calling this fancy mead. The place I bought this had four meads from this meadery. This was the least expensive of the lot at 20 bucks. It's made by Shram's Mead in Ferndale, Michigan. I'd love to give you more information about them, but their website and Facebook page are pretty sparse on the info. Their Facebook page at least has this. Shram's Mead is dedicated to the production of the highest quality honey wine possible. We are currently operating a small specialty grocery store focusing on contact-free curbside pickup. Shram's Mead offers craft mead and beverages made with unmatched recipes and bold ingredients, which reflect an uncompromising commitment to quality. We support local beekeepers and suppliers and strive continuously for sustainability. Shram's enthusiastically supports the reputation and growth of the meat industry. All right, as far as their products, they have a ton. No, no plain mead. This is the closest one you can get. They have a ton of mead mixed with various fruits. Their prices for a 375 milliliter bottle, which is what this is, range from 18 bucks for this one to $190. Most are under 50 or pretty close to 50. They mentioned being a specialty grocery store and their site reflects that with a lot of specialty grocery products like beeswax and candles and books. They have a homebrew category, but there's nothing there. With that said, it looks like a cool spot to get more than just meads. Here are the limited stats you can find on this mead. All right, Shram's Mead Ginger Mead. About 20 bucks, that's what I paid for a 375 milliliter bottle. Like I said, the website has it down for 18. It's mead, honey and ginger, no info other than this. Michigan, I'm assuming the honey is locally sourced because that's what they said. And it's a 14% ABV. That's really all I got. There really isn't a lot to talk about unless, you know, talk about with this mead. Not unless you know the main flowers like the thorns. And since I've really only messed with three meads, I don't know how many meaderies put out text sheets with things like aging, what the mead was aged in, or floral sources, acidity, etc. Anyway, enough talk. Let's get into these meads. I'm like super excited to try this. All right. My little crown cap. So being honey, I don't know if you saw that, but there was definitely a, um, a, a kind of viscosity to it, a little thickness to it. Poured a little bit heavier than, say, a wine. Aromatically, there's not a whole lot. At least not to me. Maybe, maybe it's just not, I'm not used to uh, nosing meads or smelling meads. I mean... I guess it smells like honey. I don't know. I feel what I really get out of this is like this clean aroma, um, like a wet rock and um, like carbonation because, well, there should be a little bit of carbonation in here. Well, no, shit, but there, there, I think there is. I mean, I get a hint of like a bit of honey, like the candy bit of honey, but really not much else. Now, this could be because I pulled it out of the fridge right before I started recording. Whereas this one I pulled out of the fridge a couple hours ago when I first started the whole re recording session way back from Sweet versus Dry Wine. So we're on episode five and I started, yeah, I started pretty late and all those episodes have been long episodes, right? So this could be just, it's too cold to really smell much, but we drink beer too cold and you can smell it anyway. I feel like it's opening up a little bit more if I just swirl the crap out of it. I mean, I smell stuff, but it's like, yeah, it was just taste it. It's probably way better on the, on the palate. All right, Thorne, I didn't want you to kill me because I couldn't smell anything, but on the palate, I can definitely, I definitely, well, I don't know what definitely, but I definitely um, taste some stuff. It tastes really cool. There's... It tastes like an antique shop. 
tastes like a small town. Like, I don't know how to explain this. Like you go into a small town and you go into like just their, 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 the retail, just the buildings. Um, but I also get like that potpourri, like florals, right? Flowers, right? You should, I, I guess I should be tasting flowers. It's like this combination of, of different flowers and um, that a caramelization, the honey, of course, uh, some spice to it, kind of generic on the spice. Like, I don't think I have anything specific, but let's try it again. Like sage, a little bramble, kind of like the brush, kind of like you're walking out through the countryside and you kind of can taste the, in the air, you can taste the, the flora and fauna or the, or the, 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 the plants you, 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 there's that, there's like that flavor in the air, right? There's this um, bit of savoriness to it. It tastes really good. It is way more on the palate in the retronasal than just smelling it out of the glass. And I don't remember if the Viking's blood meat was like that, and we'll find out from this. I bet you I smell the ginger on this, but as far as everything else, we'll see what it's like. There's some other flavors that I really I just can't nail down. I'm just maybe not familiar with what they are. Maybe a bit of like spiced apple. Yeah, maybe like a cinnamon spiced apple thing going on with the potpourri and like nutmeg and other, like baking spices, the honey, the po yeah, I already said the potpourri, the honey, the caramel. Yeah, it tastes really good. I'm right, gonna leave the rest of this in the glass and we're gonna open up the uh, shrams. Yeah, I'm not using Corvin on this, mainly because I know it'll last forever. Or it'll last long enough in the fridge where I don't have to, you know, try to drink it in like three or four days, whether I do, um, whether I do, uh, did a vacuum in or just put the cork back in, which is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to do a, uh, a show on, on wine openers. Uh, this is the one I typically use here at home to open, just open a bottle of wine and uh, is my preferred style uh, of wine opener for a few reasons. So whenever I do that show, I'll talk about why. But professionally, I use a different style of, of wine opener because it's actually better when you're in a work situation. But at the house, this is totally fine. All right. So again, you get that little bit of uh, viscosity. I mean, it's not like thick like honey or a syrup, but it definitely pours, there's a thicker pour to it. Yeah, ginger like all freaking day. Um, this is like, this is like going into a restaurant that use, you know, Asian restaurants mainly that use ginger and you get like a dish that, and the, 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 like the ginger just like, pieces of ginger in it and you like like wow and you kind of like bit into it yeah that's what this is but let's try to delve through that it's hard when that it's such a singular aroma it's hard to like get through that whether it's this or wine or anything else but it's just very spicy like ginger spice i mean i don't know if there's i don't think that's all i'm gonna get on the on the aroma and it's the 350 train if you can hear it it wasn't as loud as the last train 30 minutes ago. Yeah, it's, 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 it smells clean, has that clean, freshly sprayed down like concrete um, type of thing. There is a bit of a floral component. There's a bit of honey. I think I'm just trying to find them in there, but it's just super, super gingery. But again, that, that's what I kind of expected. Now, let's just taste it. So it's very perfumey, very frou frou soapy. Not taste that doesn't have like that that bad soapy taste, but you know the the the, the types of things they put into scented or soaps like your 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 hand soap that you put in a, in a fancy bathroom. That's what this is. And there's a touch of savoriness to it too, but it's like lavender and. Um, 
what else? Uh, like Zalea, that kind of stuff. That might be, maybe I'm guess. maybe I'm flat out guessing the flowers, which that'd be kind of cool to figure it out. Um, if you could, if you could do that with mead, if each flower has certain, you actually smell the actual flower, taste the actual flower from the honey or in the mead, or it's just like, it's like wine where these flavors weren't really in there until fermentation happened. So that's why you do, that's why wine doesn't really taste like grapes. It tastes like other things because of fermentation, except for a couple of grapes that you taste like grape. But I wonder if mead is like that. I'll have to find that out. I don't know. I don't know if I'll know that by the time that this episode comes out, though this is the last of everything, so I have time. Maybe I'll try to find out. Maybe I'll email these Thorin guys or these Shram guys and ask them if there's a way to, to if that's what happens. I like this mead, but it's spicy. And it's like spicy, like literally spicy. Like you actually ate the ginger. You know how ginger kind of has like that heat, a little bit of spicy heat to it? Yeah, it's, like, it's a little hot. So it's it's totally ginger. You get that, you're getting that um, floral component, but they're fresh. It's not like a potpourri that's dried out. Um, like a jasmine, honeysuckle. It's like just a, a, di a bunch of different flowers. So, you know, I know I mentioned, I can't remember the first two I mentioned, I'll, you know, because I'm really trying to figure this out. I'm not trying to figure out the actual flowers they use. I'm trying to figure out what I'm tasting. Yeah, the lavender. That was the, that was the flower. Really more the lavender, some hibiscus, some azalea. Yeah, you have, of course, you know, of course, the obvious. Um, a little bit of cinnamon. It's good. It's a little bit much for me as far as the ginger. Like, I probably couldn't drink a whole ton of it in one sitting. Or I probably would have to have it with some food to really tame the ginger. But it tastes good. Um... If this is your thing, you will really like this mead. It's not necessarily my thing, but I'm going to enjoy it for sure. Um, between the two, this is what I would prefer. Now, like I said, where I bought this, they had some of their fruited meads, but they're like 50 bucks. And I, you know, I got it. I have a budget, <laughs> believe it or not. Let's get a little bit more aromatic because it's warmed up a little bit. What I like about this one is more complexity to it. There's more other flavors to this. There's more savoriness to this. I'm not saying it's a better mead. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a better mead. Because this tastes really good too. Like, you know there's some, some quality going into this. Because realize, this would be a $40 bottle of wine. This would be a $36 bottle of wine. Technically, these wouldn't be twice as much. Half bottles are never half of what the normal price of the wine is. This is a $20 bottle, or I pay $20. It's probably close to like a, in wine world, it'd be like a $30 bottle of wine. And this is $18. That'd be closer to like $26, or closer to like, yeah, $26, $28. Half bottles are usually a really bad deal at retail. Yeah, there's there's a lot of that soap character, like that really, like very pretty. That that's what it's it's very pretty. This isn't pretty. It just smells good. Um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna try to masculine and feminineize this stuff. It just doesn't it doesn't smell pretty. It doesn't have that 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 type of smell to it. It just smells good, right? This has that that pleasant, pretty aroma and flavor. Now that I've had enough of it, or I've had more of it, the ginger, the spice, like the heat spice of the ginger isn't as um, pungent, isn't as, as um, powerful. It's still there, but yeah, it's good. Hey, you should try some mead. Go to your local wine shop, beer, beer thing, liquor store, wherever that, I don't know if your wine shop's going to have any mead, but... You know, go to your local 
place and check out some mead, man. It's cool stuff. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And then tell your friends until next time, meet it up.